we're going to talk about vision as the special sense that we're going to focus on. It's super cool. Um, it's definitely a special sense. The eye is a very special organ. Um, it's very complex. It is designed to have multiple components to have it work really well. So to focus images that allow you to see color, motion, where things are, what things are, be able to see color in the daytime and then be able to see at nighttime as well. So I wanna use it as our example of a special sense um, to look into the detail of both sensory transduction for vision, this is photo transduction. So using photoreceptors, but the eye uses much more than just photoreceptors to allow it to work well. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the other structures. Some of the external structures, I'm not gonna go over. Some of these, you know already, um, even you know things like eyelashes, eyebrows, which are important for keeping things out of the eye to keep our eye um, functioning well. So I wanna start with what is the stimulus for vision? Obviously, you know it's light. Um, briefly, I wanna talk about what this means. This integrates physics. And I'm not gonna go into tons of detail on the physics here besides to just let you know, when we talk about vision, we're talking about the visible light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So electromagnetic spe spectrum encompasses everything from gamma rays um, through ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, radio waves. These are all part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And visible light is a very small portion of this, spec of this spectrum. And this is what humans can see. So we can, this is what our eyes are able to take and transduce into neural signals. And most of us, there's color blindness that does exist. Um, most humans are able to see with these different colors within this range. Bees can see ultraviolet. So pretty cool. Um, so light is actually detected as photons. Um, that are going to literally hit the photoreceptors and change protein conformation to be able to allow us to perceive different wavelengths of light. So that's the stimulus. One other thing I want to tell you about in terms of external eye anatomy before we go into what we're going to be focusing on are these muscles here. So these are the extrinsic eye muscles. And these are what allow your eye to move right now, do it, move from side to side, up and down. Um, extrinsic eye muscles are kind of the external ones that allow for eye movement. These are innervated by cranial nerves. So over here, we've got these two innervated by the trochlear and abducens. And do you know of another cranial nerve that is related to eye movement? You do. All of these, so these rectus muscles and some of the obliques um, are all innervated, I must have room down here, by the oculomotor neuron, um, nerve, cranial nerve that you saw in that sheep brain on the midbrain coming out at the bottom of the sheep brain. So I'm not going to talk more about the external eye muscles besides to remind you that these are skeletal muscles. So they're innervated by cranial nerve. This is somatic, somatic motor division. And we're going to, this is going to be important for when we talk about the intrinsic eye muscles related to pupil diameter. Those are not going to be somatic. That's an autonomic reflex. So let's do some eye anatomy here. There are these tunics, which are layers of the eye. And I wanna tell you which things you need to know about. So outside, this outside layer here, this is actually the white of your eye. This is called your sclera. 
at the front, there's a special, special tissues that are transparent, so light can pass through them, and also protective. So this is epithelial tissue that is actually stratified, but very thin um, and allows light to pass through. This is your cornea. It heals quickly. So if you, if you scratch your eye, it really hurts, but it also heals. The sclera then is around the rest of the eye. Um, this is actually the white of your eye as well. The choroid is the next layer in. So that's right here. This is going to provide nutrients um, to the eye. And then underneath that, we've got our most important layer, our retina. This is where photoreceptors are located, as well as other layers of cells that are gonna allow for phototransduction and then processing, initial processing actually happens in the eye. So um, this will be the focus of lecture, the retina. So those are the layers. We also have some other important structures here. So light's gonna be covering, coming in, it's my little light symbol, from the external environment. It's gonna pass through this region right here. What do you think this hole is? I'm not talking about this big thing here. I'm talking about this hole. This hole is actually your pupil. Your pupil literally is just a black hole. Surrounding that black hole is the colored part of your eye. This person's eyes are green. Um, my eyes are blue. Depending on the melanin present or not present and the amount of melanin and the types of pigments, this iris is different colors in different individuals. Then we've got this part right here, this is our lens. The job of the lens is to refract light so that it can be focused on the fovea. The fovea is not shown in here. I'm just gonna draw one right here. It's a special region within the retina where most of your vision occurs. So the whole job of the lens is to focus this light at the right location, which is the fovea. The lens can change shape to, to be able to do this. How does it do that? Well, you've got these muscles here. These are called ciliary, ciliary muscles. These are part of the ciliary body that contract or relax to change the shape of the lens. When, so phototransduction is going to occur at the retina and then that information is going to travel to the brain via what? The optic nerve. A cranial nerve that crosses at the optic chiasm becomes optic tract, come back to that. You've seen it in lab, right? This region right here where the optic nerve is located in the eye is called the optic disc. This is gonna be a place where phototransduction can't take place. Again, I'll come back to that. Let's see, a couple more terms here. We've got a couple of chambers here, right? So the eye is full of fluid. Um, this is the posterior chamber. which is full of vitreous humor. That humor is a liquid. The anterior chamber is in front of the lens. It's anterior to the posterior chamber. And it is full of aqueous humor. A little bit more watery than our vitreous humor. 